And good afternoon, everyone. This is Jason Horsch from Xanadu Gallery. Uh, I'm here with Barney Davey of ArtPrintIssues.com, um, and we're here for our uh, occasional podcast together. Hi, Barney. Hi, Jason. As always, good to be with you once again. Good to talk to you. And um, as any of you have attended before know, this is a um, more of a podcast format. We also, both Barney and I do um, workshops and webinars where it's a, a little bit more formal and, you know, step one, step two, step three kind of thing. The podcast is more of a discussion, uh, but we're going to be giving you some uh, concrete action items that you can walk away with hopefully today on the topic of blogging. And um, this uh, just after sending out our invitation to this, we found this is a, a hot topic amongst artists. A lot of artists have questions about blogs. Um, they're interested in blogging. They want to know if they should should devote any time to it. Is it worth the effort? Um, and so I'm looking forward to, to this conversation. Uh, before we dive into it, I do want to just briefly go over um, some of the details of how the broadcast works. Um, any of those of you who've attended before know the ins and outs, but um, those of you who are here for the first time, it'll help you to know that you can participate in several ways. You're going to be able to uh, watch the slides as they come up on your screen. Um, again, in this podcast format, there's going to be a little bit less content because it is uh, less formal. Uh, but you'll be able to listen to the discussion. And then most importantly, uh, this is an interactive format where you can ask questions. Um, so on the right-hand side of your screen, you'll see that you have a control panel one of the boxes on the control panel is the question box. Um, anything that you type into that box, we'll be able to see and uh, respond to, or at least we'll try and respond to as many as we can. Um, and then at the end of the broadcast, we'll open up the uh, microphone to um, you. If you want to come in audibly, you'll be able to participate, and I'll give you instructions at that time on how you can do that. I'll also mention that we are recording this broadcast, and we'll have it up on our blogs uh, afterwards so that you can download the recording and listen to it, uh, again, at your convenience if you'd like. Um, to begin, I'd like to just run a quick poll. Let's see if I can get it here. Um, and this is related to your blogging. And the question is, how often do you blog? And we'll let you all start voting there. And as they're voting, Barney, let's uh, l let's dive right into the conversation um, and, sure. and just start. Uh, I'll I'll mention that we both do have blogs. Barney is, I think, the more experienced blogger than I am. How long have you um, been running blogs now, Barney? I started with Art Print Issues as a blog in 2007, and it's currently running close to 500 posts on it. Excellent. Um, and I have run Red Dot Blog since 2009. Um, and I think uh, if I did a, a post count, I'm somewhere in the, the mid-150s or somewhere like that. So um, we both do have blog experience, but I'm going to defer to Barney on, on um, some of the issues. And, and I'm going to be learning uh, as much as some of you are. So um, let me go ahead and close this poll and just quickly share the results. I see that we have a, um, uh, a good variety. About a third of those in attendance um, don't blog at this point and, and are probably curious to find out if it's worth the time and effort and how to do it if it is. 31% um, have blogs but don't blog that frequently. 17% twice a month or more. And 16% weekly. 2% um, are blogging on a day-to-day -day basis. Uh, and I don't think those uh, results come as too much of a surprise, Barney? Uh, no, not at all. That's I, pretty much what I would expect to see. My personal feeling is that uh, blogging is really an important tool for artists and they can get a great deal out of it, but it needs to become kind of an ingrained habit for not only artists but the your readers and the only way to do that is be consistent. So I would tell anybody who's seriously looking at blogging as a way to enhance their business, and that's really the only reason why you want to blog. You don't want to blog because you just want people to get warm and fuzzy. You want to blog because you want people to get to know about you, know more about you on a personal level, and then um, 
be more interested in, in you as a person and consequently in potentially buying art from you. So I think anything less than weekly, you're really watering down your efforts. If that's if you can't get weekly, try to at least do don't say twice a month, go for three times a month. Weekly is, I think, um, doable if you discipline yourself to spend the time to work on it. And I, I know a great deal of the, the, prob the probability is what do I blog about? And we'll, we can get into that in a, in a little bit more yeah, detail. Yeah, absolutely. I, well, let's, let's, um, let's go down to some, some nuts and bolts first. And um, what do you think about uh, blogging platforms? What, um, you know, for an artist who doesn't have a blog at all, where would you start in terms of platform? I use a WordPress um, blog site. Um, what, what are your thoughts on platforms? Um, my art print issues is on TypePad, T Y P A, Type T Y P E P A D dot com. It's a more than adequate uh, professional um, uh, solution for blogging. I like it better than Blogger or Blogspot personally because I think it, the templates offer a little bit more. I got started on it in 2007 and I didn't really know what I was doing. I knew I wanted to do a blog. I'd been doing an online PDF download newsletter called Art Print Issues for a couple of years and I could see that blogging was the future and wanted to get involved and at the time WordPress is not, was not then what it is now. Mm -hmm. I, in retrospect if I had the chance I would have built started in WordPress and it, one of my goals for 2012 is to actually move uh, art print issues off of TypePad onto Word, uh, WordPress, but it's not a pressing issue. I'm doing well with it the way it is. So um, I, like num I like WordPress number one. It is more technically challenging than something like Blogger, Blogspot, um, or um, TypePad. Um, Tumblr, T-U-M-B-L-R dot com, has quickly become a huge um, blogging platform for all kinds of things. So I don't know much about it. It's another one of those free services. Um, so I would definitely look at Tumblr. Frankly, I, and at the end of the day, um, the platform is secondary to the content. Yeah, I certainly, I've spent a, a good amount of time um, on artist blogs, and it's pretty rare that I'll even pay attention to you know, what the platform was. Like you say, it's it's more about what's what's on the blog site than 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 the platform per se. If you if you have the choice and you're technically inclined, WordPress is the way to go. It gives you the most uh, flexibility um, of of any other situation that you'd come into. But if you're already down the path on Blogspot or Blogger or TypePad or Tumblr, that I would worry more about the content than than the platform. Excellent. Um, we already talked about uh, a little bit about the the frequency of blogging. Um, it, I, I'm just going to say that um, f for our blog, um, it, it was it it kind of seemed like it was important for us initially to start to get to readership to have a good um, body of of articles there. And so uh, for a while we were we were, were blogging daily to start building those up and and now we try to blog at least um, three or four times a week and, and are ramping that up as well but um, I think I will agree with you that it is just a, a matter of setting aside some time and saying you know I'm going to be dedicated that that during this time you know an hour a week or whatever it is I'm going to be dedicated to 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 making a blog post and and I think for an artist that would be the same kind of commitment that would be required is to to find a dedicated time. Um, you know, and then obviously, um, if you can have some shortcuts so you know what you're going to be blogging about, I think that that can be one of the biggest challenges uh, in terms of creating consistency. Um, here's a tip that I use um, for um, post. I have probably um, 30 to 50, I, I'm not even sure, posts that are drafts. A lot of them just have a, um, the subject line an idea for a blog will come to me. I want to get it down somewhere to remember, so why not just, I go in and create a compose and uh, put in the, the subject line or maybe a few bullet points about um, 
something that I want to talk about. I have one I just uh, wrote last night. Uh, I just made the title, No One Will Do It For You. It just occurred to me, isn't that so true? Nobody's going to do the painting for you. You can't, essentially nobody's going to carry your water for you. It's in life, in art, and in art marketing. And so that will, that's going to germinate with me for a while. I've had some of these things that it's been a year, 18 months, before I actually got around to writing the post. But the thought was been in the back of my mind. And sometimes as I get you know, other thoughts that relate to it, I'll go back to that draft, throw in a few more points. And before I know it, there's a bunch of stuff in there. When I get around to, hey, now's the day I'm going to write about that, it's, a lot of the content is already there for me. So that's an easy way to keep track of random ideas that you might get for um, blog topics. Yeah. And um, I'll throw in a pitch here for um, art print issues. If you go to art print issues um, and you'll find under popular topics, uh, it's a column on the sidebar. One of the most popular, highly read blog posts that I've ever written is 52 blog posts, uh, top 52 topics for artists, something to that effect. I don't have it up right in front of me at the moment, but I sat down and wrote what I thought were 52 pretty good ideas for that artists could use to post about. That and none of them were. I had a peanut butter and jelly sandwich for lunch. Right. Um, <laughs> it, you know, some of them were, that come to mind were um, who inspired me to be an artist. What. I, I talk about your an art teacher. Maybe it's a, that moment in your life when you wanted to become an artist, or what's going on in your art community. Um, who are some other artists, contemporary artists, or friends of yours that uh, that you that you like? Um, you know, so it doesn't have to be all about you. And here's my latest piece of work. It can be about your whole experience of being an artist, or just even your whole experience of being a human being. If you went and saw um, the movie The Artist and you were moved by something in that you should write about it or I wrote a post once about um, comparing uh, talking about American Idol and art and I know a lot of people want to you know go give me a break but there's there are analogies between what happens in the art business um, with something uh, get, making a break and getting successful and the things that those kids on American Idol go through. It was a very popular post. It surprised me. I thought it would get a lot of jeers, but in fact, it got a lot of um, people who were writing to say, "I agree with that." It was interesting. And I find, um, and and in in the gallery um, where we have the opportunity on a day to day basis to be interacting with customers and and talking to them about the artwork, um, that collectors and, and potential buyers are really fascinated to understand the inspiration behind a piece of artwork. Uh, they want to know the story about how it was created, um, you know, why the artist was drawn to that subject matter. Um, and a blog is the, the perfect medium for sharing that, um, that, that kind of, of information, that kind of narrative, that kind of story. Um, and so I think that it, it makes a world of sense for an artist uh, as they're creating new pieces to, to share those new pieces on the blog um, and to write a short post about the inspiration and the story of creating that. Um, and, and I think that, that just the exercise of writing that story out and, and sharing it on the blog, um, even if, you know, even if your collectors um, don't necessarily end up seeing it there, well, the next time you have a show or you're at an art event, um, you've already thought about the story and worked through some of the narrative, and you're going to be better at sharing that story. So in some ways, I, I think that an artist's blog can be a great tool um, for just fleshing out some of your thoughts about your work. Um, and, and um, you know, a lot of times, I, I think when a collector's looking at an artist's website and maybe links onto the blog, you know, they're probably, in reality, they're not likely to subscribe to your blog and, you know, to spend, uh, you know, hours every week following your blog, they're probably going to go through um, and, and spend, you know, maybe one or two visits looking at your artwork. And so being able to go back and um, look at, at your stories about your artwork, I think it's going to be very valuable from a collector's perspective as they're looking at that blog. It's, it's kind of an additional tool to what you have maybe on your website. 
That's a that's a good point. I I think educating people in that way, in a narrative way about your art, is a great way for you to help collectors get enthusiasm for other potential collectors. Because what I've noticed is when I go into someone's home and I admire a piece of art, and this is a, I'm talking about somebody who is buys original art or buys really nice prints and obviously has an appreciation for art. If I go somewhere in a, someone's home and say, that's a really great piece of art, I like it or whatever it is I say, invariably I find that person wanting to tell me as much as they can about the artist and maybe where they bought it. I bought that at a gallery when I was a, on a vacation in Scottsdale on Main Street and this gallery, this artist does this, he uses this technique or he has this inspiration. Yeah, absolutely. They love to share that, and so if you give them the narrative, and maybe even think of it in this way in terms of writing those posts, what would I like my audience, my collectors, to share with other uh, with with other people who might encounter that art? Yeah, so it might give you a different, slightly different perspective in terms of how you're going to read it. But th that's the kind of thing that re can really give you legs with a you know with a blog post. Um, and help your collectors feel better about what they bought and share that with others along the way. Yeah, and I think um, kind of along those same lines, um, talking about experiences that you're having um, with your art, uh, you know, if you're, you're participating in a show or a festival, you know, after it's over, write up a, a brief review of what happened at the show and your experience. Um, if you can get photographs of yourself, you know, with some of your customers, um, creating some some human interest um, that that future collectors can see. Um, you know, I, I find that collectors, uh, you know, they want to be a part of something. They want it to be, uh, you know, maybe I, I wouldn't say that they they feel like they have to like something that other people like. But seeing that there are other collectors out there who also like your work is going to reinforce. Um, their sense that that uh, that your work is good and 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 worth looking at, and so sharing that. Um, if you can, uh, if you can get testimonials from clients who have your work, um, boy, sharing that on your blog would would be worth its weight in gold. Um, you know, ask your customers, past customers, for a testimonial about what the artwork's done for their home. Um, you know how they've shared it with their family, and if you could post photos of the the uh, artwork installed in their home, again worth its weight in gold. And I'd be posting those on your blog and on your website. I, I'll uh, I'll uh, see that and and uh, double down on that exact idea and say if you can take it even a further step. And I know this isn't going to be for everybody, but if you can do. Uh, take a webcam with you. Most uh, uh, most smartphones these days have got pretty good video cams in them. If somebody's willing to give you a video testimonial, or you can have a third person inter hold the camera while you talk to somebody, tell me that's fantastic. Um, Google loves videos. So if you can get a a, a, blog, a video on your blog, that's way more interesting to many people than um, just reading something or seeing a picture. It doesn't necessarily have to be at a show. It could just be you in a, a um, in your gallery setting, or you talking about something, or you having a conversation with another artist. So use your creativity there. But if you're un, if you're unafraid of getting in front of the camera, or just at least talking with the camera on, you can do great things with, with video. Um, they call it vlogging or video blogging. It's, it's fantastic what you can do with it. Um, if you want to see a, a, a great example of it, go to Bal's Art Diary. B-A-L-S-A-R-T-D-I-A-R-Y dot com. She's a young, engaging artist who does fantastic with her video blogging and I realize not everybody's going to be have that you know kind of engaging personality that she is but there's no reason why you can't take away from some of the ideas that she uses for how to get video to help her market her work and herself and the technology is making that easier and easier to do yeah I, I encourage artists in my uh, in my art marketing workshop to look into nano 
tech, uh, green screen technology. The the same thing that uh, television studios just a few years ago were paying two hundred and fifty thousand dollars for it to have a green screen so the weather caster could stand in front of it and point to Iowa and say those poor suckers are getting killed with <laughs> you know tornadoes or freezing rain or whatever. You can get that now for you can make it almost for nothing. There's instructions how to do it if you just search for it online. Uh, green screen technology. Um, but you can also go to Amazon and buy a kit with the lights, the backdrop, and the software that allows you to create your own backdrop. You can have your art behind you while you're standing in front of it, or the Grand Canyon, or um, you know, you can be standing in the front of the Mona Lisa or the Sistine Chapel or something. It's if you want to get creative with it. Um, for 160 bucks, I think is what a, a setup on Amazon costs. I, if I were an artist doing that, I would be jumping all over that because the possibilities for it are endless. And, uh, YouTube is the second most trafficked search engine in the world, only behind Google. So that tells you that the, the popularity of art on our, our videos is tremendous, and you can embed them right into your blog. You just grab the embed code from the bottom of the YouTube video, slap it into your blog, and, it, and you can run right off your blog. So you get the advantage of having the video on your blog, but also getting the on millions YouTube of as well. Yeah, fantastic. And uh, for, for, for the next question then is, uh, how long should a blog post be, or how long does it have to be? Well, it doesn't need to be. I mean, the, here, from from an SEO search engine optimization point of view, you will find the standard answer is 300 words. Um, and I've used several um, SEO um, blogging software um, programs. One's called Scribe SEO that I think they charge about 30 bucks a month for. You you write your blog post, check it in Scribe, and it'll tell you where all your it'll give you a grade on how how well you're uh, doing in terms of search engine optimization. I learned a lot from using Scribe SEO and then decided I didn't want to pay for it anymore. Uh, so in my WordPress, there's a SEO program called Yoast. It sounds like toast with a Y. And they, they concur with um, Scribe SEO that 300 words is the minimum from Google's perspective in terms of analyzing a site and and, and uh, looking at how much content is here. If you want to get page rankings for your site, your, um, you need to have enough content. Google and the other search engines come down to one word in terms of what they're looking for, relevancy. They are looking for relevant content. So if you're talking about um, you know, um, orchid uh, paintings done in um, pastels, then you should you should have about 300 words and orchid paintings done in pastels or whatever the keywords are should be repeated about 4% of the time throughout the blog post. Um, and you should also have links in your blog post, hyperlinks, outbound links in, in your blog post. But I know 300 words sounds like a lot, but um, it's not really if you're, if you're talking about something that you're passionate for. My trouble is you can tell because I don't shut up. <laughs> Limiting um, yourself to 300 words. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's like, oh, my goodness, I'm at 800, and I wanted to be 300. So um, three, and, try, and try to shoot for 300. How, um, how important do you think it is to, to be thinking about SEO for an artist who's working on their blog? Um, you know, how, um, in terms of converting tr into traffic, uh, how much effort should an artist be putting into thinking about SEO? And and for well, those of you who don't know, it's search engine optimization. I should I should just state that. Yeah, and SEO is just going through certain uh, techniques or massaging your uh, blog post or your web page, for that matter, so that it's more acceptable to what's called Google's algorithms. Google has about two hundred different measures that they look at when they view when they crawl a web page or a blog post and what the result is the more you optimize the site for that search engine as it crawls it the the more likely you are to rank higher um, so the the 
I think it's worth it. You'll hear people say, don't spend a huge amount of time on it because you don't get um, the ROI isn't a, quite done. yeah exactly that yeah. you don't get the payback from it um, for doing it. My take on it is probably true that you're not going to build a art business based on having high page rankings for something unless you just are so focused on doing or orchid, orchids or something like that. Um, but if you're going to do it and take a few extra minutes, learn the basics of SEO um, and, 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 and apply them because it certainly doesn't hurt and it really, it might take you five or ten minutes more to uh, once you get the basics down on doing, optimizing your site to optimize it. So if you're going to go to the trouble to write the post, do the SEO, um, it's not the end of the world if you don't because SEO probably isn't going to be the bottom line driver on your art business. Well, and if you're writing um, about topics that you're passionate about and, and you can be consistent about doing that, hopefully you're going to get some natural um, you know, some natural search engine optimization. But, um, you know, we, we've definitely found with our blog that um, just, just even a couple of paying attention to a couple of details with search engine optimization has, has impacted our traffic. And I think the, uh, the, the second part of that then is that you need to be tracking your traffic so you know what's working and, um, you know, where people are coming from to your blog. Um, and, and we certainly keep an eye on our stats. Uh, what tools do you use, Barney, um, to, to keep track of your stats? Um, I use a site meter um, as a way to just show me how many uh, page visits and um, unique visitors I get on a daily basis. I use um, Google Analytics to help me understand where the traffic's coming from. Is it coming from a search engine? Is it coming from a referral from another site? Is it coming from a referral from my BarneyDavy.com website? So that I get an idea of where it's coming from. Then I drill down further and find out what what keywords are people searching that bring them to my site. Uh, if you're using WordPress, they have some built-in, uh, they have some plugins that you can get for Yoast for SEO, and there's also uh, site statistic plugins that you can use. We use StatCounter.com um, is one that yeah, StatCounter is another. Us. Yeah, StatCounter works great. Um, any of them, artists aren't. This isn't like your Amazon, and you need to get it down so granular that it's ridiculous. You just need an overall idea of what's 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 working. If you see a repetitive pattern where people are coming to your site based on some key words, then you want to ramp up on that, and and not every post, but just be cognizant of. That helps. There's interest there. I should, you know, blog about that somehow. topic more and and yeah, um, yeah, absolutely. Um, and and then what about using a what about the name of both the name of your blog and your URL for the blog? Um, always a big discussion about that. I think um, you know, in a perfect world, um, you should have your name in 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 the uh, domain name for your website and or your blog and that they should be the same. Um, it, going back because I started in 2007 with artprintissues.com, I might do, and it, I have art print issues, um, but if you go to my site it says by Barney Davy on it. So I'm branding myself that way with my tagline so that people know that it's coming from me because I'm using my website barneydavy.com you go there to learn about my my books and my consulting and my workshops and so forth um, I wish I would hung it all together a little better I didn't so if you haven't done that it's not the end of the world I'm doing fine um, without it but keywords your name in the blog is very helpful and having as much as you can be um, the same just helps you brand yourself. Some artists cringe at that word, but it's true. You are a brand of certain arts. We all are to one degree or another. So, the, And the less you water down your brand by having a different name on your blog than you have on your website, uh, 
the easier it is for you to drive traffic and drive, create awareness for yourself as a, a brand. Um, that all said, I'm, I'll come back to one of our first comments. Content is way more important than these kind of things. If you have this under your control, keep it the same. I have blog.artistwebsite.com like you see on the example there. Um, or as much as possible have this the same, have continuity in both your blog and your website and get your name in there if at all possible. If you don't have it in the title, your formal URL, your domain name, then do like I've done and get your name prominent on the blog so people, and when they come there, it's visually apparent that this is your blog. Excellent. And um, what about getting people um, to subscribe to your site using RSS feeds or uh, mailing list um, providers? Uh, what do you think is going to be most effective for getting people to follow your blog? Well, I'm the poster child for how to do it wrong, like a lot of things. I just I didn't know what I was doing, and you know I just dove in there. So I I rank. Um, if you do a search for top 75 art blogs, there's a company called Invespp, i n b e s p dot com that ranks the top 75 art blogs. In um, I'm I'm one of them, which is pretty amazing to me because my topic is about the art business, but with a f emphasis on the print market end of the art business, which makes it pretty esoteric or a small compared to you know most of the art blogs on there are art blogs that are consumer driven. So um, one of the, the reason I bring this up is I rank very high for RSS readership. RSS stands for Real Simple Syndication and it's if any of you use a, a, a Google Reader or a, a friend feed then you're, what you're doing is aggregating a bunch of blogs into one place where you can read them all at one time. You can even do it in Outlook what happens is there's that little, it's like an orange square and it's got an R or sometimes it just has a diagonal lines across it. When you click on it, you can subscribe to an RSS feed, which means that it's brought into your reader. The pot, That's great, except that you don't know who those people are. I've got a thousand people on an RSS feed. I don't know who they are. I can't send them an email to say, I'm going to be in... Santa Fe next month with a with a workshop. If they if they miss my blog post, I have no other way to communicate with them. So, I'm a big fan of collecting email addresses first and foremost. It's a great way for you to build your business long term. So, I would de-emphasize an RSS feed and emphasize using an email service like I use. If you subscribe on my blog now, I have prominently up at the top a place where you can subscribe to. Um, my blog and it goes it's managed by a company called MailChimp.com which I'm fond of because they will allow you to have 2,000 subscribers free and mail up to 12,000 emails a month free. Nobody's given anything close to that in terms of you know here's a great service we're practically giving it to you and I'm betting that most people listening to this don't have a list that exceeds 2,000 so this is a great way to get a free mailing service. And a great resource. And a great resource. And so don't don't uh, emphasize the RSS feeder. Yeah, it's more convenient for your readers, but you're trying to sell them something. This isn't about goodwill and totally at ease. If people are getting something from your blog, they should be willing, if you have enough content on there, coming back to content, if you have enough content on there that's of interest, people will give you their email address. And, and if you want... To, uh, you, you know, there were a number of people who um, emailed in um, prior to the broadcast asking questions, and a lot of them were asking, how do I pe get people to my to my blog? It seems like the only way I can get people there is by sending out an email and, and um, you, you know, almost kind of asking, how can I find other ways to do it? Well, I, I think that um, from my experience, the email is the best way to get people to the blog. So, um you, you know, I would definitely emphasize building that mailing list both on the blog and then anytime you are out at an event in the physical world, at an art show or an art festival, 
you want to make sure you're giving people an opportunity to sign up for your email list and then use that list to promote what's going on on your blog and to, to increase the readership that way. Um, I think Facebook is also another uh, tool um, that, that, that's going to help get people to your blog. You should be definitely having, um, you know, every time you post something to your blog, you want to post it on Twitter and Facebook um, so that your followers can, can see those, those blog posts. And um, they, they all kind of are, are work in tandem. We became more successful, um, you know, kind of with the whole social media blogging thing when, when I realized that the, for us, the best order to do things is to write the blog post and then base all of our, our social media content around that blog post so that there's kind of a, a cohesive theme for, for people to come to and, and read about there. Um, very good point. Just a, 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 a note, if you're taking a business card at somebody's, at a, at a show, you need to tell them or get their permission, even if it's just verbally. I'm going to add you to my mailing list. A business, somebody handing you a business card isn't carte blanche to just put them on your mailing list. You need, need to ask them or get their permission. Um, and another, a couple of other tricks that I think are, can be very useful in terms of developing more um, readership is one thing that you, you're really good at, Jason. You ask people to you know, share the love. If you help me, forward this, let other people know about it, send this to two more people. Everything that you put out has got, pass it on or share this. And so that's one way you get, you ask people to help you. Another way is to go on, comment on other popular, find the most popular blogs out there um, and comment on them. If you're a decent writer, you can do a post, you can write a, an article for, for Huffington Post. They take contributed content. Um, you can write the blog post, uh, guest suggest writing guest blog post for um, other bloggers. I take guest blog posts. If you think you've got a good idea that it, that's in line with the kind of material and information that I provide my artist and you want to approach me about a guest blog post, I'd be glad to talk to you about it. I don't do it heavily because I want the blog post to be about me, but I will always entertain the idea of a guest blog post. So if you can get a, if you're, if you got 300 readers and you can get on a, somebody else's subscription list, uh, he's got 3,000 readers, uh, that's a great way to get blog posts. So comment, comment frequently on good, on the post of other bloggers um, and look for guest blog posts. Uh, a final one on that is um, give something away to people and then have them tell them about it. So give a mini print, give a, a high res download of some image that people can use and you know offer them. You can print this if you want and make a nice print out of it. Um, just can't sell it. Hazel Dooney's done that. Uh, Banksy has done that. So there's no reason you can't copy that same idea. Give something away. Give a little to get a little. Excellent. And um, a, a kind of a final point to talk about is e-commerce on the site. Does it make sense for an artist to have a shopping cart on their blog um, to be, you know, kind of pushing the the uh, the blog to be more of a, a commercial site than than just a uh, you know, like say, a narrative site? I'm I'm of the believer that you're you're in business, and that um, we talked about this briefly, Jason, before when you were chatting just before we got started, two things. One, I think you should put your prices on there. Um, and it should, then you should also, it, as long as you're selling something that isn't available through another venue where you have a trusted partner like a gallery, and you're, this is only exclusively available through you, um, put your, make it available. Put, put the prices on it and put it, let somebody buy it from you. Um, this is a 24/7 selling machine for you in some ways, you know. Um, so don't turn down the opportunity to sell from your blog. Your blog is going to get more traffic than your website. So, in most yeah, I, I'm going to agree with that, and I think that um, you, you know you want to be a little bit careful. Speaking now from the gallery owner's perspective, you don't want to be sending a message to your galleries that hey, I'm competing with you, or or even potential galleries. 
Um, and, and if you're showing with galleries, you might want to include the purchase information, you know, pricing, size, et cetera, um, and then include language that uh, if, if the visitor to the site is interested in purchasing, they can contact one of your galleries and then give the contact information. But um, I, I'm right along with Barney that if you don't have a gallery showing your work, absolutely make this a storefront where people can have that opportunity to buy. There's, there's nothing wrong um, with, with letting people know that, hey, th this artwork is for sale and it's very easy to purchase if you're interested in it. Um, as a follow-up to that, I think that uh, I just was reading this in Internet Retailer Magazine. I read a lot of different stuff. Um, that it, it, Just one line stuck out at me. Shipping is part of the buying experience. So let people know how it's going to be shipped. I've had this idea for a while and I've been promoting it in my workshops that a great video for you to have on your website is to have somebody lay it all out and have somebody um, video you or you video someone else how your art is packaged. I think it would be a great interesting video. Okay, I, I just bought a piece of framed art from you. Let me show you the package, where it's going in and how it's going to be sealed up and sent. Give some people, um, a, a, let them show what care you take with your art to begin with. I think Jason in his book mentions using white gloves. Great idea. Mm -hmm. um, Anyway, there's an idea. It could be pictures, it could be a video, but give them, let them understand how this will be shipped. Not only what the cost is, but here's what the packaging is going to look like. You know, just more way to add, build in value and show professionalism for what you're doing. We had a, um, a number of people in the invite. We requested um, that you send in your blogs if you'd like to have an opportunity to have them reviewed. Um, we received uh, more than we could possibly even look at, and I just want to spend a few minutes um, showing you some of the blogs um, that, that were sent in. And I, I think we're going to be careful. We're not, we're not trying to criticize the blogs, maybe just give a little bit of critique and um, maybe talk about um, how some of the things that we've talked about uh, apply to this. So I just want to, if it's all right, Bernie, I want to bring up a couple of images of sure. blogs that we could look at. Um, the first one wasn't sent in to us. This was one that um, you recommended, Barney. Why don't you talk about what you like about uh, this blog? Well, uh, first of all, the, the content. She's she just keeps going with with uh, great content. But then also, just look at it. It's very clean. Um, small header, but to the point. Um, she does have a, a sidebar. She has a single sidebar. Um, and those are all um, relatable things to something else that, that she's done. She uses a lot of really good imagery in there. That image that you're showing up there now, you know, that's interesting, I think, to a lot of people just because it's showing art in, the, in a different context than just seeing a picture. It's showing it kind of in a gallery setting. She blogs consistently. Uh, she's well known. Um, contributes a lot of articles and is involved. Um, sp spends time doing workshops. She's she's raised her awareness uh, with her blog, um, and it, it shows. She has a Google has something called Google Page Rank, um, and you can look at anybody's blog and see where they're at. It's it's not a hundred percent foolproof thing, but she's at a page rank of five, and that's impressive uh, for an artist, a single artist to be on um, a page rank of five is very impressive. And as you can see in the address bar up there, she's on Blogspot, joannematera.blogspot.com. So there's a proof that the platform is secondary to, to the content. Um, Hazel Dooney, one of the most controversial and uh, well-known and popular um, art bloggers out there, also uses Blogspot, although I think she's retired her self versus self blog after putting up 800 posts in about four years. She was really prolific. It shared everything about her life on that, on that, on that blog, way more than I dare say anybody that's listening to this would ever care to share, but that's just part of who she is. And she, hers is on Blogspot, so it's not that important. Um, let's take a look at another one. This was one that was submitted to us, and this is Christine Montague Art dot, uh, WordPress dot com. So this is a WordPress platform. 
Um, and again, I think uh, you can kind of see a couple things that you can see right away that she's doing well. Um, she has an easy subscription, and that's the first thing you see there on the right is uh, enter your email address to subscribe to this blog and receive notifications. Um, and she's listed that she has 559 followers there. So um, obviously that's uh, working for her. Um, any comments, Barney, on, on this blog? Yeah, she. I would put the Cameron Canvas part at the bottom. It's, it's making it too easy. You see, uh, pardon me, do you see where below the search, if you scroll down just a little bit, Jason, uh -huh. uh, you'll see the RSS post and comments. So you can subscribe to the post or the comments or both in your RSS reader. I don't want RSS readers. I'm, I'll take them if, they, if that's how they want it, but I'm going to make it more difficult for you to find that and way easier to subscribe to my email list because I, I want you on my email list. I want to have I want to be able to have some other communication with you. So your Actually, suggestion would be keep the email subscription where it is but just move the RSS feeds down to the perhaps the bottom of the blog. Yeah. Yeah, right. and I, I think that um, I do, I, I agree with that. I definitely do, though, would want the, the RSS feed there. Just speaking from a, a blog follower's perspective, um, I've been to some blogs before where I got irritated because I couldn't find a way to to get the, get them into my reader, and um, so you don't want to make them too hard to find. But, but uh, okay, yeah, I, I maybe the bottom is the wrong place, but I wouldn't make it right there beside the subscription. I I would just rather the yeah. I agree. Be, You're giving them a choice, and and they might choose the one you don't want them to. Yeah, and if you if one thing I mentioned before is an offer enter your email address to subscribe well maybe maybe when somebody subscribes and you know get a throw a little special in there have them take go into a landing page and give them something free shipping on their next order or, you know that mini print or whatever it might be round trip world round trip round the world trip or whatever's in your budget. <laughs> and um, I, I've got up on the screen right now a couple of, of comments on her um, her blog. Let, let's talk just for a second about uh, uh, comments. Um, something that, that I've noticed recently um, w with my blog is that if I want comments, I have to ask for them. Um, y you know, what do you think about this topic or, or what's your advice about this particular issue? Um, when I do that, um, I, I get tons of response and conversation starts and, and it creates a real sense of community and back and forth. Um, but if I just post a topic and even if I think it's the most fascinating topic in the world and I expect a lot of response, if I don't ask for the comments, I don't get them. That's pretty typical. I would agree with, I would agree with that. And comments will help you rank higher in search engines. They'll look at that because another one of the things that in the Google's algorithms that ranks high besides content is popularity. And popularity means content comments on blogs or external links from another site to your blog. Those two things will ramp you up in Google um, searches. Uh, let's look at another blog. This is uh, Brian Ida. Um, and uh, again, I think that, that I like the simplicity of, of his blog, and I also like, um, it's obvious he's a pretty uh, image-oriented blog, and, and I find that interesting. Here it looks like I'm looking at images of the studio, um, and I think that a collector is going to find that interesting, and, and um, you know, obviously um, just being able to see what, what's going on in an artist studio and what's going on in their lives, I think that's probably one of the, the best types of content you could give to a potential buyer of your work. Um, I, I would agree. Um, when uh, I was doing the smartest uh, telesummit this year, I was on the panel with Jack White. Some of you may know him. He's one of the m most prolific art marketing authors out there. I think he's got 12 books, and he's taught his wife, Mickey Sankaric, how to paint, and subsequently she's gone on to become a multi-million dollar art uh, selling artist with Jack's help. And one of the things he talked about in terms of blogging was, uh, I think they have 2,500 followers. One of the most popular things that Mickey does is show work in progress. So she sometimes videotapes it or sometimes she just, um, there's pictures, but they can see how a work is progressing along. And with her interested followers, it's almost a way to, um, you know, build in sales before she even gets to 
um, of the finished piece. So, this, and it's another idea uh, for blog posts. If you had uh, one of those a week for, and it took you a month, and maybe you paint it in a week, but you you might spread it out over four weeks or however you want to do it. It's an easy way to get great content that's of interest and for you to talk in depth about what you're doing and why you like these colors and what your influence was and so on. And you can see Brian's subscription there. It's a pop-up. Um, and then we've got another site, Anne May. Um, this is a Blogspot site, site as well. Um, again, pretty simple design. Um, for me, there's, there's maybe a lot going on here with some of the sidebars and all the lines and different colors. Um, but, but I think that um, it's still pretty easy to, to follow along and see what's going on. And you can see that uh, Anne has Put, made several posts recently and, and um, you know, seeing some things that I might not typically expect to see on an artist's website, so I think there might be some interest there. Um, I, I agree with that. There's not a lot of uh, copy there, which is going to make it hard for a search engine to have crawl it and say, this is worth re returning as a result. Um, something to mention, and every one of these that you've shown had this this way, um, put your sidebars on the right, especially if you've got images and other things on the left, because the sidebars will load last, um, and that means that your content will load first if it's on the left side. Um, and you'll you'll notice that um, your your page speed load will go a little faster. And speaking of that, when you put images up there, put just what you need. Don't put huge images up there. Um, because they take longer to download and that slows your site down and that is another Google algorithm. How fast your site loads does make a difference. So there's somebody who's not doing it the way I just said. It's, it's not the end of the world if you're doing it that way. If you like the way it looks and you're happy with it, and it looks like from looking at this one, um, at Joyce's site here, that, that she's got the images on the right. So if you're going to do that, have the stuff that's slower loading on the right hand side as opposed to the left. Um, and I, I wonder, um, you know, on, on this one it has, again, the email subscription box, box over on the left. Um, for me, where it says join 66 other followers, that number doesn't seem all that high, and I might almost feel like I'd want to maybe eliminate the, the, the count until I had a little bit higher number um, to be able to show there. I, uh, right. Yeah. It's, just it's, psychologically, um, you know, I want I want to be following something that that's pretty popular, and I don't think sixty six is maybe the, the 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 number that I'd want to see there. I I would agree with you. That's just if if there's a way to take that out of the uh, subscription, um, do it until you get it up to a substantial number. Well, let's. Um, Let's take some questions now, um, and and I, I realize we're running a little bit long as we're wont to do typically, but um, th this is a really interesting subject, and we've got a lot of great questions. I want to go first to some questions that uh, I received prior to the broadcast by email, and the first one comes from Jeannie Thorne, um, and she's asking some real fun some fundamental questions. I think that every artist would need to ask, and that is, as an artist. Um, what should be the purpose of the blog? And I think we've touched on that a little bit to, to share narrative. And, and ultimately, the, the purpose of the blog is to, to generate uh, sales of the work, whether directly through the blog or by reinforcing the experience that the, uh, the collector is having with you and with your work. Um, additional thoughts on that, Barney, purpose of the blog? Yeah, 100%. If, if it's not... You're doing. You're in business. This is just a. This is just a marketing platform for you to use. The unique thing about a blog is it allows you to be more personal, personable with people who are essentially strangers in many cases. Uh, they can learn about you, and there's there is no other way to do this than through blogging. So. The word blogs is a shortened of web blog, and it started off as just people who were journaling, writing about things that they were passionate about, even just themselves. And it's evolved into this, but don't get away from that. Keep it, keep it interesting, uh, and not just about you. And every post shouldn't be about your new 
your new piece. Okay, that will help you. Uh, another question is, is it okay to dis discuss other topics on your blog, or should you just stick to your art? And I think we've kind of touched on that, too, that, that you can have some variety there. Um, you, I, I think as long as you can always tie it back around into the art in some way. Um, you, yeah. you know, it's, it, it's probably going to... To, to, to be talking right. about NASCAR or something like that on your art website right. is probably going to be a, a little bit of a stretch. Um, you may be the world's most passionate NASCAR fan, but uh, that that's maybe a little bit of a stretch to relate back to your art. I, I agree, and um, uh, politics and religion are even more so. It, uh, yeah, if you're totally passionate about it and willing to um, cut off part of the your potential audience because they're offended by your stances on certain things, go for it. But if, if this is, to me, I'm trying to use this to elevate myself as an artist and to help me sell, um, then I wouldn't do that. I wouldn't run things that are going to cause bias to you that you don't need to. That's not what this tool is about. Don't invest in it. Um, this is way off subject, Jason. I just wanted to get it in here. I hope sure. you don't mind. No, not at um, all. There's something called Gramley, G-R-A-M-L-E-E.com. It's a professional um, proofreading service. It's dirt cheap. I'm looking at their site now. You can buy words there and bank them. So you can buy 1,030 words, which should get you a, a little, about, 300, about three blog posts added to proofread for $19.95. Turnaround is 24 hours or less. I've used them successfully many times, always been very happy with them. So if you're worried about your English and your grammar, use this service. It's great. It'll, you'll, it'll improve your writing dramatically. And I, what I've done is learn from when I see how Grammarly edited my stuff. Um, I've gotten a better writer as a result. So. Uh, we, we, I just wanted to get that in before I forgot about it. Yeah, and, and certainly you'd want to be careful not to, um, you know, we've been talking about your brand, and you don't want to be uh, branding yourself as a, a poor writer. I know I'm a poor speller often, and, and my grammar sometimes could use some real help, so I try and make sure that everything I put out gets uh, proofread and edited, so I think that's a, an excellent point. Um, Lynn, uh, and I'm going to have a hard time saying your last name, Lynn. It's Lynn Letourneau ask the question basically about spam on the, the comments in the blog. What are the tools to, to avoid spam? I know I've certainly run into this on our blog. Um, and, and, you know, you get more than just a little bit irritated sometimes by the, the volume of, of spam through the comments. Um, have you found any tools, Barney, that can help uh, eliminate the spam? Um, if you're on um, WordPress, there is something called Akismet, A-K-I-S-M-E-T. Um, TypePad has got a really fantastic spam blocker. I I almost never see the only kind of spam I see are people that are sending in sneaky comments that are mostly always written in poor English um, that have nothing to do or very little to do with the blog post, which I immediately delete. But there aren't I'm not getting slammed with it. So um, I I don't I I know bloggers got something, but uh, and I think you can subscribe to a kismet um, even if you're not on WordPress I'm not I'm not a hundred percent sure about that but um, if you're really getting hammered with it then you need to put some kind of captcha C A P T C H A form on there that makes somebody prove that they're human so that it, that'll cut down on it too will cut down a little bit on your comments but if you're spending all your time weeding out um, spam it's probably worth it yeah, excellent. Um, I'll just mention, too, that if you want to ask a question live, if you have a microphone attached to your computer, um, click on the yellow hand icon, and that lets me know that you have a question and have a microphone, and, and we'll try and get a few live questions in as well. Uh, in fact, let's let's try and go to a live question. Let me go to um, Eva Curie. Eva, how are you, and do you have a question? Boy, and I, Eva, I've got you unmuted, but we may not be connecting to your microphone, unfortunately. Let me try another one here. Uh, Brenda Kelleher. Brenda, are you there? Do you have a question? I don't know if you can hear me. We've got you loud and clear, Brenda. Oh, wow. 
Um, I'm sorry, I just missed a few minutes of the call because a call came in. Are you posting a replay? Yes, we will be posting a recording of the broadcast. Um, I'll post it on red.blog.com. Barney, will you be posting the, the link to the recording as well? Yeah, I will, I will uh, um, have a link up here sometime in the next few days. Okay, perfect. So we'll make and it amply available. This is absolutely terrific. Thank you so much. Oh, thanks, Brenda. Appreciate you joining us. Thank you. And let me go to uh, Jamie Hagenberger. Jamie, are you there and do you have a question? Yes. Um, I was actually wondering uh, how these guidelines kind of maybe alter if you're representing an organization of artists. Um, you know, if the frequency needs to be a little bit different, how you manage that brand and um, specifically how we get member events uh, not really advertised but you know mentioned and covered without it seeming like an advertisement uh, to the okay. rest of the world yeah that's a great a great comment and question and and I think that the blog is the the perfect tool for that because it does give you a little bit of an air of um, you know impartiality to a certain degree it almost feels more like a um, news in a way than it does just pure promotion. What are your thoughts, Barney? Well, if you got an organization and it's a, a group of artists that are in a, in a coalition or um, co-op or whatever it is, that, that organization needs its own brand to begin with. I would encourage every artist that's a member of that to have their own blog and to have links from, their, from, the, from the organization's blog to their blog and vice versa. It'll help both organizations rank higher for that popularity thing that I was talking about. And I know you get popularity thing, Jason, with your Xanadu Gallery Online having artists link back to you. That helps you get higher rankings, which in turn helps them get more views to their art. So it's a, it's a good thing. So I, I, would, I wouldn't worry about it being an, uh, an advertisement. It is. Just be you know ethical about it. Uh, uh, People want to know if you're having an event. I want you to tell me about it. I expect you to tell me about it. But man, if you don't, if there's something that I miss, so don't think you can. You don't worry about hammering people too much. If you're excessive, you should know it. But you can probably be way more excessive and effusive in talking about what you're doing than you think you can. Yeah. Well, push, and the other great the thing about there. a blog is that. Um, you know, as long as you're giving people ample opportunity to unsubscribe, they can, can filter themselves and, and basically your following will tune itself to, to the amount of posts that you're doing. And so um, I agree with Barney, don't worry too much about, uh, you know, putting too much information out there. I think that's almost impossible to do. Um, and, and you know, I, I, I personally follow some blogs, um, you know, in other realms, news, and, and I, I'm a fan of technology. Boy, I, I look at some of those blogs two or three times a week at a minimum. Some of them I, I look at daily, and, and um, I'm, I'm always happy to, to know more um, and, and never feeling like they're, they're overdoing it. Um, I subscribe too, Jason. I, I subscribe through email because I want to see how it comes. I don't use my reader that much, um, but I'll look at the subject matter. If it's not something of interest, I'm, I just pass on it. Um, I'll catch it the next time. With an association, um, I understand if you've got 20 people and you want to get everybody in, and you're only doing them once a you know once a week, or it's going to take 20 weeks for everybody to come around. So, um, be creative. Think about ways to do, you know, joint things or have sidebars. Look, look at Joanne Matera. She had a lot of little sidebar, interesting things going on that you could do with your, um, with your various readers who are. Pardon me. Of members who are who are involved. So there's other ways to highlight them besides just doing a blog post about them. Now, um, Marsha Broderick asked the question um, through the the question box. Many of us are working artists, working on our art, maintaining Facebook business page, Google Plus account, uh, and a blog. It seems like a full time job in itself. If you had to pick. Um, which one would yield the most results for time invested? Which would you suggest? Can you combine a blog with, say, your Facebook business page? Um, absolutely. Like you mentioned, Jason, you can you can cross-post and make sure that you just 
get anytime you have, write a blog post that needs to be on Facebook, uh, there's something called digital share cropping. And that's where you're creating content for some other provider like Facebook. You don't own Facebook. You don't get any email addresses off Facebook unless you go on a fan page and create a landing page and a way to get people to come to you. So um, blogs you own. That's your content, your rankings, um, and your way to get email addresses. So my opinion is that that should be the primary focus. Right. Blogs come first. Then look at how do I drive, how do I use social media to make my blog more important, not the other way around. Yeah. If you think of it from that perspective, um, I just listened to a podcast last night that I, I uh, from a fellow who has a Facebook fan page called Get 10,000 Followers. I seriously, I would look at that, you know, get, he offers a lot of free information. Um, and he got 10,000 followers in a matter of a few months for his how to swing a baseball bat hmm. Facebook fan page. So um, there's, it's really possible, but he's, get, he's getting subscribers to, his, to him through Facebook. That's the way you want to look at it. Use those. They're tools to feed back to your, the things that you own, like your blog or your website. Yeah, and I think I would just... Um I, I agree with that, and I think what I would add is that I, I understand that an artist can look at all the tools that are available, blogs, Facebook, Twitter, and, and start to, to feel a little bit overwhelmed and, and maybe even feel guilty. Uh, you know, should I be doing all this stuff? I'm not. I don't seem to have time for it. You really do, at the end of the day, have to, to, to make some decisions and prioritize, um, you know, from a, a, a gallery perspective and from the question of making sales. I your biggest priorities, in my opinion, ought to be first and foremost on production. You know, what, what can I be doing to devote as much time as possible to producing the best artwork that I can be producing and, and producing enough of it that I can, can build sales and build a following. And, and only after that is in place and after you have a, a, a good production base can you start thinking about some of these other things. So, um, you know, I, I think that if, if you just don't feel like you have any more time in your week to, to set aside to be doing the blog and the Facebook, I wouldn't feel guilty about that right now. I work with some very successful artists who don't do any of the social media and don't have blogs and, and have built successful careers without any of that. Um, but having said that, once you've mastered your production and, you know, if you have that interest in reaching out and using some of these new tools to reach potential um, customers, uh, then, then take some of the suggestions that we've made this evening and, and um, you know, come up with a plan. Don't let it uh, take over your life and, and um, become an obsession for you. Find a way that you can reasonably set aside some time and, and just start working on it. It may take you know, several years to get enough posts to, 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 to get followers. And if that's what your schedule allows, I have no problem with that. But um, it, it, they are powerful tools, and, and once you get them going, um, they're a lot of fun and, and can create some real um, lasting connections with your customers. Any final thoughts, Barney? Uh, we we yeah. run over time once again, but it's been a great discussion, and I, I, I know that it's been very beneficial for a lot of the people who've attended. So. Um, you use the word tools several times there, so let me give you the tool that I use that helps me be productive. It's called Hootsuite. That's H-O-O-T-S-U-I-T-E dot com. Hootsuite is an aggregator. I can log on to Hootsuite and see all of my Facebook posts, all of my Twitter posts, um, and I can schedule posts on Twitter and Facebook I uh, quite often I'll go in and and um, I I don't Twitter every day. I sometimes don't even Twitter more than once or twice a week. I try to be on Facebook a little more than that because I think it's more personal. But I use Hootsuite for both. If I if I'm in the mood, I'll sit down in an hour and ca I can crank out um, 15 tweets that I'll space them out over a, a week using Hootsuite's scheduler. So they're just going to go out. They're kind of generic things, things I found that are in interest. You know, here's a great SEO article or here's an artist that I like, whatever it is. So use Hootsuite is a tremendous productivity tool for you. It allows you to take that time, create a body of 
tweets or Facebook posts that you might want to put out and space them out over a period of time so you're not running back to the computer. It's 5 o'clock. I want to get that post out. Do it all on Sunday night and don't worry about it for the rest of the week if you want to. Well, excellent. Well, um, Barney, thank you again for uh, joining me for the conversation. It's always a, a pleasure to spend time together, and we'll hope that it's been beneficial for those of you who've been in attendance. Um, we'll be doing more of these, so keep your eye on your um, your email for announcements of upcoming broadcasts. Um, and again, there will be a recording of this session available, um, probably will be up on our site by tomorrow. Um, and, and so we look forward to seeing you all in future broadcasts. Thank you very much. Good night, Jason. Thanks, everybody. Have a good one.